All right, guys. Today is the finishing uh, part. So, uh, what I'm going to be today is chamfer these, um, chamfer the edge of the of the shoulder here, so that it doesn't feel very sharp, and sand it down a little bit. And right after that, we're going to cut a slot here, and then just wedge the the legs in for the final touch. And then we're going to be doing some sanding for the legs, for the seat, and everything else, just using the the hand pass sanding. Okay. So let's start with this chamfer. Just grab a chisel and slowly chamfer the edge. Careful not to cut yourself. You want to get it as nice and round as you can get it. You can actually use a sandpaper to round it off also. I prefer I prefer chisel. It's a little bit faster. So get all the legs nice and chamfer, and you end up with something like this. So it's a very small and slight chamfer. Okay, so now I'm going to decide where I'm going to cut the slot. So when before you decide, or based on the, the grain direction of your legs, so you want to make sure the prettier side of the, the grain is facing out. But for me, uh, all the woods look good, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm just going to follow the, the same line. So make sure they sort of perpendicular. So this one in particular is going to be cut this way, and the other two are going to be cut like this at a diagonal angle. So I'm going to be marking here, here, and here, here, and here. Okay, so that's the first marking that you need to do. Okay, so to mark this, first thing you need to go back to your reference. Since we already have these uh, lines, you just have to go back to your, to your marking. And you just need to draw a straight line down here. Just try to get as nice and straight as you can on both sides. And you're going to be cutting to about a three quarter way, somewhere around there. Just a straight line using a handsaw. Okay, once again, we're going back to our knee technique. Hold the work piece down with your knee at the bottom and the top with your hand. Just slowly start the cut. Make sure it follows the line. Keep looking at the line. Okay, now I have cut it all the way across on the top, but not at the back yet. So now my job is to get it to the back. Shouldn't be difficult if I just follow the exact same cut. That's perfect. So switch it over to the other side. Copy it down.
basically how you cut a curve on the tendon. Pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple. Takes like less than five minutes. All right. Okay, so now it's time for the wedges. Okay, so we need wedges like this uh, to tighten up the, the, the joint once we put it into the leg, I mean, into the seat. So I'm gonna show you how to build these build these wedges out of the scraps that I asked you to save earlier. So we really hope you saved it. So first thing we need to figure out how wide they should be. Just bring your seat in, measure it up. It should be around 20 if I'm not wrong. Yep, 20. 20. So yeah, just gotta make sure they're 20. If it's 21, it's still fine. So I'm gonna make them 21. So first thing you wanna do is just cut them straight down. 21. This measures it here. Okay, so it's right there. This is where we need to cut the wedge. You don't need to saw this, you can just chop it down with the gym. Now we have drawn out all the pieces. Just gotta cut them. Just gotta cut them fast. Once again, stay outside the line. It should split like that. Because uh, it's a thin piece, so splitting won't be that. Difficult. I'm trying to demonstrate it. Get it on the camera. Hold it like this. Okay, that's what you want. Okay. So if it's slightly bigger, it's completely fine because uh, we can taper it down with the chisel. Okay. So to make a taper, um, you're basically thinning one end down. You're just making it thinner by chiseling. So I'm going to keep the wider side as the back of the, the back of the wedge and the, the narrower side as the front. So I'm going to be chiseling material from the front. So first thing you do is put it up against the stop lock, just chisel that in. Make it really small. You want to get it as thin as you can get it. So I'm just going to go all the way down to the edge. That's quite a lot, I know. Careful of your fingers. Make sure you have a stop lock at the end. Chisel the corner. And chisel the other corner. And flatten the middle. So it's cornering and leveling all over again. Cornering. Cornering. Okay, so now I'm slowly tapering that in. We're almost there. Just try to keep everything as flat as you can. Now I'm not even holding the work piece. Just, just a slight angle. 
And there you have it. Uh, a wedge that we're going to be using for our seat. Okay. So I'm going to make two more of these and then we'll move on. Okay, so now we have our wedges. Let's see if this goes in here. Looks like it does. I'm just going to hammer it in. So when you are putting the wedge in, you want to make sure it goes down straight. You don't want it to angle left or right. Just slowly drive the wedge down. And that's it. And of course you want to hammer it as, as far as it can go. So I'm going to put this in here. This one might be a little bit wide. So if the wedge is a bit too wide, what you can do is just taper the front. Just shave a little bit from, from, uh, from both sides. Just a tiny bit. Okay. There you have it. The legs are in and they're solid. So at this stage, what you can do is to, well, if you have sanded the seat and the legs, you can just glue, um, you can just glue it in. Uh, for me, I'm not done yet, so I'm gonna take the legs back out and sand the whole thing, and then um, glue everything in. So if you want to take it out at this stage, you just have to twist it from the bottom. Oh my God, it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight, which is good. All you can do is just knock it left and right. So at the beginning of the, the tutorial, I said that there's no difference between the taper and the straight joinery. And the difference is that uh, the taper joinery are much stronger with it, uh, with every sit. The more you sit on it, the more it's going to be wedged into the seat. So over time, it will make the the seat really, really strong. All right, now I'm going to go back to sanding the entire thing, and hopefully uh, glue everything in by the end of the day. Okay, so now I'm sanding all the legs with 80 grit sandpaper, and I realize, you know. It is pretty tough to sand um, over a longer period of time. So try not to use too much force when you're sanding. Just wrap your finger around this. So it kind of forms like this little scoop around the leg. Just go easy. You don't really have to get rid of all the scratches or all the ridges. They're they kind of form like a nice pattern, so I don't mind that. What I'm trying to get rid of is the, the marker, um, the pencil line, the marker lines, all of that. Because they don't really add anything to the chair. Yeah, but aside from that, you don't have to worry too much about it. So long as you get it nice and smooth, that's all you're looking for. Pretty nice, pretty smooth. All right, that's it for me. So now I'm on to sanding the seat. Um, I'm gonna focus mostly on the bottom. Same reason because um, just. You just need to get rid of the, the pencil lines, uh, a couple of scratches here and there, a little bit of the couches. Um, you can leave these pattern uh, carving marks. And then I'll move on to um, sanding this scoop down a little bit, just a tiny bit. 
I'm not going to get rid of all the March though, because I think it's it's a big undertaking, especially considering we're only using a hand pad. But still, we're going to try to get rid of as, as much imperfection as we can. Starting with the pencil line. First for the top, I'm going to focus mostly on the removing the marker and less on the, the seat scoop itself. same time you can run off the edges it's a very soft rounding Now that I've rounded the edges, I'm just going to continue sanding the entire flat spot clean of all the markers, and then I'll move on to the seat scoop. Okay, as for the seat scoop, I'm not really concerned with um, getting everything smooth and um, even. I just want to make sure I sand the whole thing, even if I leave these uh, gouging um, marks. I, I, I would still be fine with it. But of course it depends on the result that you're going for. So if you want everything to look perfect, then you'll have to spend a bit more time sanding. Just make sure you sand with the grain. Okay, so now I have uh, sanded both the seat and the legs to 240 sandpaper, 240 grit. So we're basically left with um, gluing and um, oiling the, uh, the seat. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. Yeah? Okay, so now we are at the very last step where we have um, sanded the seat and the legs. So as you can see, everything is in place. All we need to do now is just drip some glue into the joint, which I'm gonna do now. Um, and then right after that, we're just gonna cut, cut these little bits off and carve out the remaining little, little tenon sticking out uh, with a cow chisel. And that should be it. Okay, so uh, just use the cyanoacrylate. Just drip it around the joint and cut it off. All right. So let's, let's imagine the legs are glue, right? After that, I'm just going to use a saw. I'll uh, move we'll some of the material here. Yeah.
Okay. So now I saw most of the material. This is little thing sticking out. And take care of that and you have a chisel. So if you're having trouble um, cutting the, the, the two pieces at the back, you can use the blade of the hacksaw. Just take out the blade and just saw it at an angle. This works just fine. Voila, that was really fast. All right guys, after all the sanding, the last thing we need to do is applying the finishing. So for me, I have this, uh, I have this clear lacquer uh, spray um, usually I would use uh, wood oil, like a linseed oil or any kind of furniture oil or wax, but um, this is the only uh, finishing that I could find, so you can use that. But before you use this, make sure you shake it well. Make sure you wipe it. Shouldn't have any dust on it. And just give it a nice spray. So make sure you give a, a very thin, light coat all the way around. And of course, when you're doing any kind of aerosol spraying, you want to make sure you're in the open. Make sure you're spraying in a nicely ventilated area it smells pretty strong so you definitely want to follow the, the instruction on the bottle um, so for me it says you gotta wait for about a couple of minutes and then you do like two to three coats so after the first coat you can give it a a good feel uh, and sometimes you'll feel these little hairy spots just go over that with the uh, 240 sandpaper on those uh, crazy spots and then you gotta spray it again I only waited for about five minutes before I before I do the sanding and respraying and it also depends on the type of uh, um, lacquer that you're using
the aerosol spray dries really fast but if you're using a water-based lacquer it might take you longer again it depends on the kind of finishing that you're using so just make sure you read the instruction so that uh, you end up with a smooth and nice finished stool Okay, I'm ready for another coat. This is going to be the second coat. Very light coat throughout the entire seat. Hello. It's getting really shiny right now. Oh, would you look at that? Nice. So this lacquer finishing is pretty good, but it has a lot of shine to it, so which is why I'm going back with the sandpaper to bring the shine down a little bit because I don't want it to look glassy or plasticky. I suppose that is like one disadvantage of uh, lacquer. It will be really shiny and glossy. But if you like natural finishing, I would suggest going for like a furniture wax, furniture oil. Once again, I couldn't get a I couldn't get a hold of the, the furniture oil or any of those uh, stuff, which is why I'm using this right now. All right, guys, that's basically it for the for the stool project. Hope you guys enjoy this uh, the series. And uh, if you manage to get to this stage, take a picture and put it up on, the, on Instagram. And don't forget to tag us on Instagram and Facebook. And check us out on YouTube as well. See ya.